this video showcase, we will first introduce you to the 6-8 Twig Science instructional materials and demonstrate how teachers can use them to plan and deliver instruction. Next, we will dive into the Grade 6 module, North Island Rescue, to see Twig Science in action in the classroom. Let's jump online to Grade 6 to check out key planning resources such as the scope and sequence and the framework alignment. In each module panel, teachers can access standards, professional learning resources, visual kit lists, and prior knowledge resources that can be assigned to students to accelerate learning. New Zealand. Discover the fragile relationships between pollinators and plants that depend on each other. And develop an ecosystem survival plan to safeguard New Zealand's unique environment. The North Island needs your help. Each science module has an anchor phenomenon for students to experience, describe, investigate, and ultimately explain. Applying key science and engineering practices, including SCP-6, constructing explanations and designing solutions, and cross-cutting concepts, like CCC-2, cause and effect to make sense of the phenomenon. As students progress through a lesson, they explore and explain smaller investigative phenomena that will help them ultimately address the anchor phenomenon. Students observe examples of diversity of traits amongst their peers. And a pre-exploration gives teachers an opportunity to pre-assess students' prior knowledge. The Wonder Questions language routine is an essential part of Twig Science's student-centered approach, enabling students to feel that it's their curiosity that drives the learning. Questions are recorded on a Wonder Questions chart and in students' digital phenomena trackers. I put down the claim overstimulation can be harmful on young developing brains. And what evidence did you have for that? Mice that had been stimulated had fewer newborn nerve cells in the hippocampus. By sharing their ideas and asking clarifying questions, students drive their own sense making. <laughs> students carry out a hands on lab activity investigating the traits that plants have to attract pollinators by examining flower samples. They'll use their observations to consider questions like, what might attract a pollinator to each of the flowers? A video about plant-pollinator relationships offers further food for thought. This session shows students engaging in the science and engineering practice of obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. They obtain information from a variety of multimodal sources and communicate their scientific information in their written explanations. Session two also provides a comprehensive honors and advanced extension activity for above-level learners. There's additional support for English learners, below-level learners, special needs support, and more integrated throughout the lesson structure. In session three, students explore the investigative phenomena that stitch birds, a pollinator on North Island in New Zealand, have different versions of some traits, such as feather color. Students then build sample models of stitch bird chromosomes using beads to represent specific genetic traits. In session four, students analyze data about stitch bird traits and the alleles present in each bird's genes. Students are combining the science and engineering practice of analyzing and interpreting data and the cross-cutting concept of patterns. That pattern is their entry point to the idea of dominant and recessive. It has one dominant and one recessive. So the dominant overpowers the recessive. In session five, as students apply their developing understanding of genes, chromosomes, and alleles, and bridge to the concepts of genotype and phenotype, students then combine two science and engineering practices, developing and using models, and analyzing and interpreting data. All this student sense-making comes together in the final session of the lesson, where students construct explanations for the statement, stitch birds look different from other pollinators and from each other because of genetic factors that can affect their growth. Students can now draw on everything they've done across the lesson, referring back to their notes in their phenomena tracker to compile relevant evidence. 